Hey folks, today I want to show you seven really cool backup fill-in licks that I learned from Ron Stewart. And if you're wondering what a backup fill-in lick is, well, let's just watch Ron Stewart at work. This whole video is really cool for a couple reasons. If you go watch it, and we'll check out a lot of the things that he plays in this video, then you're gonna notice that he barely plays during the verses and the choruses. Now, that could be because he's singing and he doesn't really wanna be playing too much. It can get distracting, it can be kinda of difficult, but actually I think it's because he really prefers the sound of just playing these licks in between all the places where the lyrics are. And I think this because if you watch other clips of Ron playing, sometimes he does play while singing. It's obviously something he can do, it's just not something that he always wants to do. So what does that mean? It means we get to choose how much or how little we play during a song, and that's gonna affect how it feels and how it sounds. So let's go over all the licks that I took from this video, and then let's talk about some different ways that you can use them in different situations. By the way, if you're looking for the tablature for all of the examples in this lesson, you can find that at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post all the tablature, bonus practice tips, live streams, all kinds of really cool stuff that you can't find here on YouTube. For instance, with this post, you'll get a bonus practice tip about how to transition from down the neck backup to up the neck backup and vice versa. So you're going to want to check that out. Also, do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's one of the things that makes these videos possible, and I really appreciate it. Now that we've learned these licks, let's talk about some different ways that you can use them. The most obvious thing you can do is use them just as Ron has here. You don't have to play a lot, just play in the gaps between the words of the song. But you don't have to use these in just that way. You can also use them in the middle of your rolling backup or vamping backup. And I'm really not doing anything too complicated here. The rolling backup that I'm using here is basically just what you'll find in my basic rolling backup and transition lick videos, and the vamping that I'm using is basically just the vamping that you'll find in my vamping videos. But that's what's so great about these licks. Because they perfectly fill in the gaps between the words, the rest of the time you can keep everything really simple so you don't distract from the lyrics of the song, which is really the main point. But that's not all you can do with these licks. A lot of them are movable, which means you can use them in different keys and on different chords, which means you can apply a lot of these licks to a lot of different situations that you might find yourself in. So let's talk about a plan for actually practicing this material so that you can use it. The first thing is you're gonna to wanna to learn these licks. 
Practice them slowly, work up the speed until you're really comfortable with them. And then after that, you're gonna wanna try to apply them to other songs that you know. All of this stuff is going to require practice and developing muscle memory, but once you start doing this sort of thing, it becomes a lot easier to add in new licks that you might be learning. And while we're talking about licks, think about all the other licks that you know. There are a lot of really simple, common licks that people play all the time that they don't really think about as being fill-in licks. And none of these licks really have to be that complicated. They just have to fill some space and be rhythmically interesting. And by doing it this way, you can create some really interesting backup that you might not have otherwise played. Sometimes people think about rolling back up as being just down the neck and vamping back up as being just these closed position chords and up the neck back up being just up the neck. But as you can see in these examples, we can do all of those things in the span of one verse or chorus and it creates a really interesting and dynamic performance. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful and feel free to let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to hear about in a video like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.